what's going on everyone? W Drums here, aka Danny. We are back doing some more important topic videos to discuss with today because I'm always in my head thinking of new ideas to help my audience out. So I've got a great one for you today. I want to talk about how to make friends, all right? So I'm going to open up with a quote from an amazing author named C.S. Lewis who wrote the book The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, one of my favorites. He's also a devout Christian and just a very impactful man in my life. So he said, friendship is born at that moment when one person says to another, what? You too? I thought I was the only one. So why did I bring this quote up exactly? So basically, what makes up a friendship? Do you find yourself struggling with talking to new people, making friends, etc.? Then this video will be for you. So I've come up with a list that worked for me and helped me allow, allowed myself to make plenty of new friends and acquaintances and things like that, and it's worked very well. So I thought I'd give these tips out to you guys and gals. Hopefully it helps you, especially with all this corona stuff going down, all the isolation things. It'll be nice to be able to get everybody out and socializing again and interacting and just, um, you know, getting together and just being with each other. So... First thing I want to talk about is you want to observe your surroundings, okay? And ask questions about the person. You want to get involved in their lives, get to know them, their journey, their struggles, their families, their lives. Uh, do they have kids? You know, what occupation are they in? What are their, their hobbies, their passions? Um, you know, things like that. You just want to figure out what's going on with them because... When you do so, people will start to develop trust with you. You have to be willing to open yourself up. You have to put yourself out there. And you have to give up information about yourself and become vulnerable to receive the same from somebody else. When you do that, you get the trust that you've been longing for, which every friendship needs to thrive and survive with. So I'll give you an example. So plenty of times with bands I've been in, um, jobs I've been in, I just literally observe my surroundings, right? I see what they're doing. You know, are they doing something different that I've never seen? Like, for instance, I just got into the whole chef kind of uh, line cook world in the last few years. So it was very easy. I'd, I'd see them chopping up certain vegetables or foods. I didn't understand that. I would just ask them questions. Or So how long have you been doing this for? Um, what are your tips here? How do you think I can excel at? You know, you want to get some common ground established because when you do that, just be a lot easier to get the conversation flowing and just for them to naturally open up to you. You don't want to force it. You don't want it to be just really awkward. You know what I mean? So let's see here. Another example. Um, so like my new job is a line cook. So the dishwasher, really good guys. I just got to know them a little bit. You know, I was helping them out in the back and, you know, I think it's odd that we go through our lives and we have all these strangers around us, but we don't interact with them. I mean, they have their own struggles, their own lives, their own families, their own dreams and desires and things that we don't even know about, nor do we seem to care about. You need to have empathy, though, to be able to gather um, friends and acquaintances and peers. You need to be empathetic in other people's lives. You need to learn to listen. With making friends, you need to understand the art of being empathetic and listening to another without judgment or bias, meaning when somebody opens up to you or they feel comfortable enough to tell you something private about themselves, just listen. Just sit back, listen, take in the information, ask good questions, be involved in their lives. Show that you care. You know, are they struggling with something? Are they feeling emotional that day? Another easy observation I've learned is with looking at people's faces. It says a lot about them. Are they deep in thought? Like, I can't tell you how many people have called me out because I've been stuck in my head all day and they can tell I'm really in my head thinking, overthinking uh, what's going on kind of thing. So people have been able to pull me out of that little world and I've been very grateful for that. It goes the other way too where I can see if somebody's stressed, I can see if somebody's frustrated or I can see if they're sad or if they're depressed or if they're really happy that day. You know, ask them. See, how's your day going, you know? Just get involved, get to know them. You know, like I stated before, you want to find common goals, hobbies, passions to start these conversations to get the ball rolling. You have to be selfless when you want to build friendships with other people. It takes a lot of work. You know, it's it's not built overnight. You can't just force it. The problem I think with social media and stuff today is that we have the ability to make all these friends and acquaintances and stuff on paper, but a lot of these people aren't there for you, unfortunately. They're not hitting your Facebook Messenger up or texting you all the time or when you're in a crisis or 
you're hurt or you're depressed and you're down in the dumps, they, they're not always there for you. Those aren't real friends. Unfortunately, you can't be, you know, there for everybody realistically, but it'll weed out the, the good eggs from the bad eggs kind of thing, in my opinion. College was a great example. Um, I met one of my best friends there. I won't use his name out of respect for identities and stuff, but him and I basically met in the dorms freshman year. I noticed uh, he was this really strong, tall, like confident guy. He just was very secure in himself. I was this really insecure, shy, awkward, needy kind of guy. He was really scrawny as I am now, ironically. Um, he was pretty jacked. And we just kind of became friends. We had common interests with Yu-Gi-Oh cards and video games and nerdy stuff like that. Drawing. He was a big artist. Still is. Very detailed. And I just admired that about him. And we kind of fed off each other. It was, it was really nice. And I remember... We would go to the gym all the time. He would show me how to lift and proper techniques. He'd show me how to eat properly. And he'd show me how to talk to women and how to just interact with people and how to just be myself and not try to please everybody, which was my big struggle when I was younger. And all these little things just added up to me being able to establish a form of trust with him. And over the years, that got stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, however, like I said, there's work involved. It's a give and take. You know, yeah, we were in the dorms, we were right next to each other all the time, but when we got out of college, you know, we had to hit each other up. You know, somebody had to text the other person or call them and take the initiative and be like, hey, you want a game today or you want to go meet up for breakfast or dinner or, or something? And it, it involves work, though. It really does. You want to really establish that trust and foundation with somebody. You're just going to need to put in the, the time. It's not just going to be handed to you kind of thing. And I know with this self-fulfilling, gratifying culture we live in now, it's a very um, taboo thing. It's work. What? You know? I can't just get it within a second. No, you got to really earn that, you know? Um, let me see what else we got here. Uh, my drum teacher, another great example. I pursued him through Facebook. I found him through YouTube videos and watched his professional um, music videos and things like that and I fell in love with his drumming had to get to know this guy like I'm saying in my list I hit him up I took the initiative I was vulnerable I asked him questions I said I was passionate about my craft of drums I admired his playing you know you compliment people you make them feel good that's also another big thing because also with the whole topic I know like a minute ago when I talked about listening things like that when you listen to somebody people like to ramble about themselves Everybody's favorite topic is themselves for the most part. People love to just yammer on and on and on about themselves. A lot of ways I've met a lot of peers and friends and acquaintances is because I just let them spill it all out. I'm an empath, so people tend to just spill their guts to me all the time, their life stories, which is a privilege. It's also a bit of a hindrance sometimes because I can take on a lot of their baggage, unfortunately, and make it my own, or it can affect my energy or my mind or spirit that day, which is not a good thing. It's kind of a give and take, but also the privilege part is that they're opening up to me and confiding in me so deeply that they came to me for help. I remember running into my uh, old friend, who I won't use her name as well, I remember we hung out with her and her fiance all the time, we partied a little bit, you know, we were in college, whatever, but I remember he was cheating on her, and me being the empathic person I was, I couldn't stand for her anymore, so what happened was Dan got involved, so... God kind of had me just run into her one day, and I remember she was just so upset and tears and stuff, and I told her, you know what, let's meet downstairs in my dorm later. There was like a private area we could meet in confidentiality, so I told her, I'll tell you everything. So I spilled the beans about who he was cheating on her with and all this stuff and how it's been going on for a long time. Yeah, it was not my place. Yes, he should have been the, excuse me, the bigger man and done it, but had I not stepped in and intervened, this woman's life could have been going down the tubes real fast. She would have been marrying this absolute nightmare of a human being. And it just, I couldn't allow it. And because I did that, we're still friends to this day. I still keep in touch with her on Facebook and Instagram. And, and we just keep up and update each other in each other's lives kind of thing. And she's, um, I think she's engaged now or something. But she's been dating this amazing guy for a while now. So things tend to unfold as they should if you let them. So... Let me think of some other examples. So like the other day, even at my work, um, I'm getting my lunch at 2 p.m., right? And this woman that I work with, she used to scare the heck of me, I told her, because she was very intimidating at first. And 
because um, I just got to know her a little bit, I found out she had a daughter. I found out her daughter used to work at the same job I used to work at. We had the same awful manager, awful, awful manager. I won't use her name either. <laughs> but it was funny because we had that same commonality and something. Because we were building this trust and friendliness and familiarness with each other, she told me, she's like, hey, I made all these um, all these pulled, porks, uh, pulled pork today in this big metal pan. She's like, do you want a sandwich? So I was able to get a sandwich. You know, I, I've noticed that when you invest your, your time and energy into people, it comes back tenfold. I'm not saying this is like that pass it forward movement or whatever, that pay it forward crap. I'm not saying that because that can get borderline, I'm just doing this for better karma. You don't do it for that. You're doing it because you want to sincerely be in that person's life and really make a difference and an impact on them kind of thing. And so it's funny because I was able to get a really good sandwich that day. And that was my lunch. And because I took the time to get to know her and invested in her, she just blessed me one day randomly. And I've noticed that a lot is that when I go out, I just treat everybody like they're my friend. You know, I go to my restaurants and stuff, or I'll take dates to these restaurants I'm really familiar with. I'm like a celebrity there because I know them. I know their story. I know who they are. And that's a very powerful thing. It, it really makes you more confident because you're more familiar with what's going on. Women love that, guys. I'm just saying, you know, you look like that celebrity, that rock star personality they're looking for. And it just kind of all goes hand in hand. But... Also keep in mind with the whole friendship topic is you need to take time for yourself. This is something I had to learn and my buddy from college really helped me with this boundary issue I had for a long time is you have to respect yourself, your time, and your energy. There are certain people that are not worthy of that. Yes, I said worthy. They're not worthy of that time and energy. So it's your job to make sure you distribute it to those that deserve it and that will reciprocate back, meaning give it back to you as well. It's a kind of thing. Because there's nothing worse than having a friend, which I had plenty of in my Bible studies and stuff, ironically, in church groups, that were always making fun of me, were always putting me down. That's not a friend. A friend somebody that will build you up, that will be there for you in your time of need. My buddy that I told you about from college, who was there at my brother's funeral. Like, that just, like that's a really powerful thing. Um, I'm trying to think of other really good examples. My singer and I have been in her band for two years now. And... We met through Craigslist. I had to put myself out there. I was vulnerable, and she was vulnerable. She had a long post about what she was looking for. She poured her heart and soul out into that post. I did the same back. We reciprocated. We got each other's information. We met up at Panera Bread. I had my little pen and paper. You know, I'm writing down notes and stuff. And I was treating like an interview, and she gave me the gig and all that. We, we've been good friends ever since. And her and I as well, we had our struggles. You know, I've had times in my life, even recently, where with my brother passing, I've been in a couple of depressive funks and it was really affecting me and I didn't want to go to band practice. I didn't want to hang out with certain friends or talk to people. I shut them out of my lives. And she was able to push through those boundaries like a good friend will be able to do. And that's kind of where I go back to the whole part of the whole being vulnerable and investing and putting yourself out there. You just got to do it. There, I know there's always that issue that people are going to be thinking of they could use that information against me, you know, that's going to happen. That, that's human nature. But the good friends are the ones worth putting that time and money and effort into, in all honesty. My drum teacher and I, we struggle with plenty of issues as well. I remember there was this one time where um, he was going through a really hard career change with different bands. And he was going through some blackmail and things like that. And just things that were just very dark topics. And... I was just there for him. I listened to him. I listened to him confide to me. He was getting angry. He was getting frustrated. Him and his wife were fighting back and forth. There was just a lot of stuff going on, but a good friend stays centered, and they're there for them. And because I was, you know, our friendship has gotten even stronger because of that. Because of that and my openness to wanting to learn more about his Christian faith, I've become a devout Christian myself, which is even cooler. And he's been able to mentor me in that regard as well in my life. And just all these little nits and crannies kind of add up over time. I mean, for instance, there's this guy at, at Wow I go to all the time, right? Um, it's awesome. I know his name and everything. I know a little bit about him. I see him all the time because, you know, one of the greatest openers, folks, that, that I use all the time is I see a girl or a guy that's working at whatever I'm eating at. And I'm, I just say, 
Dude, who are you? What's your name? I mean, I've gotten coffee or a, a smoothie from you. I don't know how many times. I've never gotten to know your name or who are you, you know? And that's something I feel like a lot of us take for granted is that we have all these random strangers in our lives, but we're not doing anything about it. You know, we have all these people we could be talking to and investing time into and getting to know and networking with, and we're just treating them like we're better than them or we're scared of them. You know, they're, they're no different than us kind of thing. And you know, the, my, so my smoothie guy knows exactly how I like it made. You know, my guy from my uh, Chinese restaurant that I absolutely love, like I've been there probably 20, 30 times. We always go there for special occasions, man. He knows my orders by name, man. We get there, he's like, you want this? You want this sushi? You want the eel? They're like, yes, sir, you know it. And you just build that familiarity with people. And, you know, I give them good tips in exchange, and there's just that, that friendship there. And I know some friendships will go a long way. Some will be more so just kind of exchanges within that moment, and that's it. But at the end of the day, your job is just there to make their lives better. And this kind of goes back to my whole how to be happy and a good person video. I can link that down below as well if you'd like and see that. But where it's all about just making them feel better and just helping them get through the day and just being there. You know, a good friend is really that simple. It's simple, but it's hard at the same time. And oh, I think I've hit the nail on the head with everything, but I'm trying to think of any other examples recently. Um... A couple of my bands I was in, so for instance, I was in this old band called The Virtue, and I remember we were at a bar for a gig, at this random nutty crazy guy that was just really fun and playful and stuff, and I remember we were just talking after the gig and stuff and just kind of BSing back and forth, and like a year, not a year, maybe like six months later or something, he came to audition to be the singer. Long and behold, he becomes our singer. It's the guy I met from the bar. You know, you just never know how God is going to have you interact with these people. And then they're going to be thrown back into your life 10 years later or a year later. You know, I had this example um, where I was referenced for voice acting work. Yes, I am a trained voice actor. Um, this woman from my old job for a call center, she remembered me years ago when I put it out there just... Subtly, you know, I'm a voice actor. I love it. It's fun. I have a demo and stuff. She hit me up on Facebook the other month, and now I've got a possible monthly gig with her friend or whatever in the future to make content for these, like, top four list kind of video things and stuff that are trending on YouTube. So just crazy stuff like that is really impactful, and it's just really cool because you're just your network becomes so powerful and i think that's the big issue i think with networking that word i hate that word usually because to me that comes off like linkedin where it's a professional profile i want to use you what do you have how can i get it and take it from you and then get my business higher up i'm not about that it, with friendship and anything in life you know you're you're going to get some positive things out of it just without thinking about it it's just going to happen but you don't do it for that you do it to just like i said before just be there for them, be a decent human being, and just try to make this world a better place. And C.S. Lewis has definitely done that. The man has so many good books. He has so many great quotes. I mean, the list goes on with that. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other examples I could use. I, I meet so many people, it's ridiculous. Like, for instance, uh, my new job that I've been at for about a month and a half almost. My one buddy from my old line cook job, him and I would tag team and go back to, and forth to dishwasher to line cook. We became good friends. We we both were very guarded at first and very quiet, shy, awkward people. And then just slowly me helping him out with dishes or slowly me offering like kind of Jesus would, like giving him food, you know, helping him out and just serving. It was able to kind of establish this form of trust. Well, wow. So Dan... Dan likes me, you know, or Dan, Dan's a cool guy kind of thing. And they would tell the other dishwasher guys, man, this guy's really cool. You know, he hooked me up with some food. I mean, he was nice. He was able to take some of the dishes back. Just establish that trust. So it's funny because I found out that we were looking for a dishwasher guy at my work. I threw his name out there, gave him high accolades and praise and stuff, gave his contact information to my boss. He got hired yesterday. I'm literally chopping up cauliflower. I remember he just goes, hey, Dan. I was like, oh, what's up, man? Why? Like, my one of my best friends is literally in front of me now at my new job, and we're back together again. Like, it, it didn't process at first that he was right in front of me. I thought we were at our old job again. It was wild. It was so surreal. And just 
things like that because we invested time into each other. Like for instance, he had a really tragic uh, incident with his, I think it was his dad. I'm not going to go into details, but his dad had um, a tree fell on them and on his house or something, and they had some. He had some damage, and basically he he had to be vulnerable about that, you know, talk about that. And I was there for him. I prayed for him. Um, just was being a good friend, and because I did those kind of things, just strengthened the relationship. And. That's basically where I'm coming from with all this. Uh, I think I've rambled enough. I'm already at 20 minutes. But I think that's pretty much it. Let me just review my notes again real fast. Yes, I have notes now. Because I'm not doing the laptop thing where I dip down like that anymore. Because that was really awkward. <laughs> As I got feedback from. That was very weird. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That I can really think of at this time. But enjoyed the content certainly let me know down below um what do you defy as a friend uh, maybe some things you took away from this or down things you thought hit home or what i missed kind of thing or what you disagree with you know just keep it friendly and civil of course but yeah besides that though i enjoyed making this video but it's been on my mind for the last five six months i've been really wanting to get it on paper and then get it out there because there's all this COVID crap going on. You know, we got to be here for each other more than ever. Stay safe. Be there for each other. Because when the doors open again, all these restaurants and movie theaters and malls and stuff all open again, man. Everybody's going to be really socially awkward and weird. I can guarantee it. Everybody's going to be really nervous to talk to people. Well, I'm going to be that guy that is going to break that boundary and just go for it, man. Just going to say, how are you doing today? Or like yesterday, even, there, there's this woman I work with. Uh, she had this beautiful just shirt on with flowers, like really pink floral looking um, flower shirt. Just looked really pretty on her. I wasn't being a creeper, and I just thought, like, hey, it looks really pretty on you today. I love the flowers. And just slowly planting those seeds of love and gratitude and serving. And that way people will just leave with that part of you, knowing that that, that part of you made their day, or made them smile, you know. Because people always remember how you made them feel. Is what they say. So, but thanks so much for watching. Thank you for the support and endless prayers for my family right now. God bless. Have yourselves a wonderful rest of your days. I will talk to you soon. Peace.